Right then, today we're going to be talking about damp again. This is from a survey last year, probably about 15 months ago. So I was paid to do the survey and paid to do um, the report on this and also they wanted me to fix it. So if you're a student, this is going to be quite a good video in my opinion. It's a long video, but it's going to go through lots of things that are causing damp issues. If you're building surveyor and carry out pre-purchase surveys, hopefully this will give you a bit of input from me, shall we say. You might get a couple of tips, you might not. If you've got any tips for me, drop them in the comments below. If you are a homeowner, you can see the sort of extent you are going to to a thorough survey and why you'd have to pay decent money for a survey and a free survey that's not going to cover half of this stuff is probably of no value. When it comes to pre-purchase surveys, this type of survey is out of the question. You're not going to be allowed to hack everything apart or everything there. You can do all the drains and stuff like that, but rarely do people want to pay proper money for a pre-purchase survey on stuff like this because they don't want it. You know. So at the end we're going to talk about the costs. Now this was a very expensive job to fix because number one you had to move out the property and also it was all around the whole of the house and outside works. So sit tight, stay tuned, we'll go through other bits and bobs at the end. Any questions drop them in the comments below, hit the subscribe Hit the bell icon so you get notified. I've got a couple of more decent classics that are coming. So thanks for watching. We'll see you in a bit. Right, what you can see here is there's damp at the base of the wall. This was predominantly around the whole of the property on the outside walls and the internal walls. So what I've done is took a speedy meter reading. So I just wanted to get a baseline figure. And you can also see I've opened up the floor and wall junction there because what I'm trying to have a look at to see if the damp proof course has been bridged on the internal skin of the wall. This image here, you can see where I've broken it out. The floor is absolutely soaking wet. It's saturated, the floor. Um, it's off the scale on the readings on there on the speedy meter. But again, the damp proof course is very low down. So now I know the floor is bridging the damp proof course. And also I know it's very, very wet. Recently, a new vinyl floor was put down and there's some staining to the underside. Readings are off the scale. Sometimes you can actually get that just because you've got like a vinyl tile underneath like a marley tile and a bitumen But what you're finding is when it's a bit patchy and stuff like that and from what I've just exposed This is obviously, you know, showing there's a big problem there. This actually here was just lifted slightly The self-leveling that had been put down had lifted. So what do we know? Damp through the floors damp walls but they're excessively damp. It's not just a little bit damp, or I would, it's what I would call wet. Anyway, the neighbour was very helpful. They said that the properties previously had a leak a long time ago, and they didn't know well out how well it was dried down. So the neighbours are always a gold mine of information. They love to gossip. If you see them out there floating about, making out they're putting something in the bin, have a little chat to them. They will give you that information. They love to gossip. So, is the information telling us this problem is a residual problem or is it something that's occurring now so this is where we're going to step to take things to another level and start looking outside and going through all the defects that will possibly be causing such extensive damp issues tea kitchen waste classic look at this what can you see here we're just slowing it down all the water is running round by the back of the gully saturating the cavity Yep, he's blocked. Yep, he's blocked. Right, so you can just see here, this downpipe is completely blocked. I couldn't clear it and it feels like something's, like a slate is capping off or something. But I've just dug on the outside to see if we can get into the drain from my air. And actually, you can actually see here is the drain pipe. And this, uh, there's no connection. So God knows how long this has been like this for. So you could imagine how much moisture is pooling around here and getting into that cavity wall. Cavity wall. A very basic stuff, but as you could imagine, this is bound to be a cause for the damp problems in there. So after we filled it with water, I'm just going to give it a little jack, just see if we can clear any debris to get it running. But I'll tell you what, I'm astonished the amount of people that turn up to do a survey, they haven't even got a house pipe. They don't even turn the taps on. They don't even lift the manhole. This is the basics. 
another one all smashed up typical what they normally do to repair it you guessed it a bag over the top uh -uh. right what you can see here is you've got restricted flow and this is actually coming from the kitchen if you remember earlier on in the clip you had all the wastewater from the sink running over the side of the gully which is going into the cavity so there's various ways to try and clean the drains here i'm using the flex shaft 204 so it's basically a lot of chains spinning round on there and you can see you've got a massive load of flow now and this is like all like grey water this is where it's been backed up for ages and it's all blocked in restricted flow I find everything in here and sometimes on the top of the gullies you find like a little grill like a little grate what I actually found was you can see bits are coming through here now what made it really difficult this one is basically that was in the drain it was so difficult to take get out it probably took me about an hour there was crisp packets in there teddies everything and also, what was really shocking, there was pants in there and some teddies. Kids are very well known for putting stuff down toilets and into drains. Also with this one here as well, there was coloured stones. So you might think, why would there be coloured stones? Fish tanks. Lots of people are a bit lazy, shall we say, when they empty um, fish tanks, rather than actually like doing it all properly, they just literally pour it down the drain. And that's what happened. You can see here, we've got a crisp packet coming out. None of this is unusual. If you're watching this video, you might think this is odd, but the strangest things are found in drains. That is a spray bottle in the drain. So here you can see the pants, nicely twisted up on the flex shaft. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna flood the cavities and we're gonna actually prove our theory that where there's blocked soakaways and drains, that this is actually backing up and flooding the cavity and saturating the walls. So here we go. Right, so you can see Obviously that's where the joint was, we know there's a problem now. Just flooding through here. You can see. Just don't know if you watch. Just put a light across so you can see where it's coming through down there. And obviously with this floor where there's no membrane coming up here, this is how it's then transferred all the way across onto the building. But yeah, you look at that, I don't know there's a problem. Lovely jubbly. What you can see here is you can see the dye coming through the cavity, and the cavity is actually flooded now, full of water, um, with the hose pipe left on for say a couple of minutes. So this is then causing the massive damp issues to the internal skin and the floor. So what this drawing shows, you can see the soak away and you notice the blue arrows. So the blue arrows are going in the wrong direction. The water is going towards the building instead of running into the soak away. It's then coming up in the gully, backing up and coming over the top. And you can see there's a slight bit of bridging in the cavity. And where you've got a stepped height in the damp of course, where there are different heights, the water is then going across the bridging, over the top of the floor and beneath it as well, to be fair. Um, everything's getting wet all across that wall and the insulation and the solid floor and that is why you've got look at the extensive damp issues because the soak away and the drainage issues are flooding the cavity along with the gullies as well where the wastewater from the kitchen was so as you know the building was saturated including the floors so we need to dry this building down before we started working on it so basically by removing all the floor covers i put um, a tented system in desiccant and we started drying the building down before we started work for a couple of weeks to sort of like bring it back to equilibrium and then we could carry on with works and we could hit our drying goals. So this is remote data logging. So I was actually monitoring the building drying down from my office. I could con control all of the drying equipment. So I knew exactly when everything's going to be ready to do the repairs. So the physical damp proof course on the inner skin was being bridged by the concrete floor. And that was a 120 mil cutout. As you can imagine, this is a very, very extensive job all the way around the property to remove the bridging of the damp proof course. Plaster was removed at low level where there was salt contamination from long term rising damp. And also you can see here the fireplace was cleaned out. And this is also the case within the living room. Typically, all of the cavities around the whole of the building need to be cleaned as well. This is a very common problem. Once the harsh were removed, you can see how damp they were. Kitchen chimney, full up with debris, typical. The living room chimney was also cut out and a DPM put under the floor because where the hearth was, again, 
no damp proof membrane which can result in dampness issues DPM in the half of the kitchen also so the next two images show where the blocks or bricks whatever you want to call them have been removed so you know as you could imagine this is around the whole of the property living room concrete back in with a DPM all pointed back up bricks are back in place where the cavities have been cleaned again this image shows the damp proof course on the external skin and the internal damp proof course is out of the shot it's just at the bottom of that picture there showing obviously the bridging so here you can see all the replastering carried out at a low level and blended in and you can see epoxy floor coverings to make the floor damp proof with some new and existing skirting boards gone back in and the kitchen refitted right then if you've made it this far fair play to you I've had to write a list because I want to go through the bits involved. So costs. This, like I said, this is a very expensive job. I'm not going to give you the actual figures because I don't really want to give away my price on stuff. But let's look at it this way. We're going to give the scenario here. So initially, you got the survey fee, right? So if they've had a pre-purchase survey or anything else previously, it's all of that involved. And then my survey fee for this job, it was a lot of money considering other people's what they would charge for a survey but you know we've done a lot of stuff with the drains leak detection cutting everything out i think i was there for nearly a day altogether it was ridiculous so cost they had to move out the property with their family for the duration of the whole works we could not work there while they were family with our safely so all the external drains had to be repaired and replaced um soakaways every single soakaway was knackered and there was two at the back and three at the front, sorry, three on the front there. So some of the ground levels ought to be lowered. The kitchen had to be taken out to do the work to get the cut out all across the floor and the kitchen had to go back in. All the replastering, so all the plaster had to be hacked off, all the cavities had to be cleaned, um, had to be replastered. Rads on and off had to go back on. So the floor repairs. So one of the floors did have uh, like, a marley, like, like a marley tile but it was okay, there's no asbestos now, but sometimes marley tiles get taken up as in this case, especially if they're asbestos. One of them had a um, bit of a weird DPM, I don't know what it was, and self-leveled, and it was just bubbling up basically. So we had to take all that back, prepare all the floors by grinding them all back. All around the edges where we cut, it was 120 mil cut out, all the way around the building, all the internal walls as well. That is a lot of work, and obviously you've got to get it all away as well. And then around the edge, we made basically a waterproof mixture to, to prevent any more dampness coming across. The floors were epoxied and then self-leveled after. So again, carpets had to go back up, come up, they were stored, they had to go back down and be refitted. The vinyl floor is useless, had to be chucked away, a new vinyl floor had to be put down. Complete decoration on the whole of the ground floor now, everything had to be redecorated. Um, so you can imagine, what I'm just going to say is, when you do do when I'm when you do do a survey for your surveyor, you can't just think it's a few high readings. It's of nothing. This is a classic example. I've done other um, case studies on damp, drainage, soakaways, and that basically showing the extent that this can happen. But it, one thing I do find is difficult with me. What I find is when you've been given a survey from an independent surveyor, a damp specialist surveyor, and they basically said, oh, you know, you need to just cut the ground level back, um, cut the plaster back about 70 mil, 50 mil, what have you, stick the skirt and back on. No, it is never very that simple. Look at all of my vid videos, multiple issues. I say it time and time again, multiple issues. And if you are a home owner and you're watching this video, Pay decent money for a survey. Expect someone to be opening that up, doing some of the stuff we've done, cameras in the cavity, taking samples, you know, exposing the floor wall junction, exposing the damp proof course, because that is the only way you're going to find the root cause of the damp and offer a long-term solution. This is a long-term solution. Just by putting a damp proof course in and bodging it all up, it's not going to fix the problem. But to be fair, it would be cheaper than doing it this way, but it's not going to have any value because when you come to sell the property again, if you have another survey, somebody like me is going to pick up all this stuff and you're probably going to end up losing the sale. You're going to have to get a load of money knocked off. But thanks for watching and we will see you soon on the next one.